that one tree that God said that she couldn't touch or else she was going to die. Now let's go on a little bit. I want to ask you a question though before I move on. Does that sound familiar to you? Yes. Ladies, I know I'm talking to ladies, but today we're also talking to men too because we're one most of the time. And some days we're not so one. But we work on being the one, don't we? But does that sound familiar how all of a sudden a trouble or a situation will come into our lives and we have forgotten everything that God has already done for us? We've forgotten the whole thing, the whole set of what He's brought us from, what He's kept us from. And He gets our focus on one thing, and what do we do? We stumble and fall just like Eve did. Let's go on to number six, chapter three, number six. When the woman saw the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it also. First of all, she saw the fruit that it was yummy and it looked good. And she had listened to Satan long enough that she had enough doubt in her mind to understand that, you know what? I don't think this is all that bad. She really, what my mama used to tell me, you're getting too big for your own britches. <laughs> and that's really what happened to Eve. She got too big for her own britches because she listened to the enemy. Don't listen to the enemy. He's going to lie to you. He cannot even tell the truth. That's right. He will never tell the truth. Sin, does not, sin doesn't always look good. Sin is most of the time it looks good. And that's the reason why sometimes it's so hard to turn around because, from it because it's so pleasant. But the Bible also says that sin is fun for a season and pretty soon it's going to bite you. Yeah, that's right. Just like, you know what, you can take a pet snake and I've never had one and I don't choose to ever have one. And if y'all have one, hey, grace be to you. But uh, you know what, it's like you can pet a snake and it can be your pet, but one day you better watch out because that thing is still a snake. It's still going to bite you. Right so don't think that you can play around with Satan. You may get away a, a while with it, but not long. Because before long, it will bite you. That's right. Amen? Sin quickly spreads. It's just like, you know what, that, uh, that oil spill that they just had not too long ago in the ocean, I guess, by Mexico. You know what, sin is just like that. If you don't nip it right away, it will spread. And you think that it only, it's only hurting you. But what is that oil seepage doing now? It's going into where all the animals live. And, and it, what is it doing? It's killing. Sin is the same way. If we don't stop it before we let it get so rampant in our lives, it not only touches us, it touches everybody around right. us. Right. Everybody around us. So we got to stop it. And you know what? As women, I just want to talk to us for a minute. We have to be honest. We have a lot of influence. We have a lot of power. And what are we doing with it? You know what? If there is something I really, really want, I'm going to be honest with you. There's probably nothing that I really, really want that I couldn't work, that I couldn't get out of my dad or my husband. I'm just being honest with you. And you know what? You guys are the same way. Sometimes we use our, our, our finesse, or unfortunately, sometimes we use our sexuality. We use what we have, the influence that we have, to gain what we want. But what are we doing with it? Our influence, how are we influencing our children? How are we influencing our parents? You know, unfortunately, it shouldn't be that way. But some, unfortunately, some, parent, some kids are more spiritual than their parents. That's the day we live in. But where are you at? I don't care how old you are. If you're in the sound of my voice this morning, you have influence on everybody that you're around. And what are you influencing them to? Let's go to, uh, wait, before we go there, I want to say just one more thing. Most of the time when we get involved in sin, it's because we choose. Most of us know what right and wrong is. Most of us really do. But what we do is we convince ourselves because we've listened to the enemy so long, just like Eve, We've convinced ourselves that it's all right for us. Right. It doesn't matter what this is. Oh, well, it's all right for me. God, let me know it's all right for me. You know? I don't have no problem going getting drunk. It's all right for me. You choose your own salvation. Well, it doesn't say that a drink is going to kill you, but it says if you're drunk, 
You can't free, you can't pull the word out. We can't just rip a page out because we've made our own plan. Amen? Okay, I'll move on. That's enough of that. Uh, let's go to number seven. Chapter three, seven. The eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. We need to still cover ourselves. Okay? Y'all can't run around naked no more. Those days are over with. Okay? And don't get like the world. The world is getting farther up and farther down. And ladies, don't fall into that trap. Cover yourselves. Cover yourselves. Become women of God. Walk like it. Talk like it. Look like it. You say, well, now you're going where you don't need to go. Well, it's just the word of God. It says to dress modestly because you are representing Christ. Every time you walk out the door, understand you are representing Christ. How are you dressed? Amen? All right, we'll move on. Then the man and the wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day and hid from the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called upon the man and says, Where are you? And he answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, God, yes. she gave me the fruit, yes, and I ate it. <laughs> you know what? I don't know about what y'all hear in your household, but we hear all the time. I hear all the time. Lord, is that woman he gave me. Amen. Shame on us, man. Amen. You have influence in your house. What do you influence in your husband or your wife, too? Are you taking care of your garden like you're supposed to be taking care of it? If the wife offers you something that's not pleasing to God, you need to rise up and become the man with the backbone and say, as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Right. Amen. Amen. Amen? So that right there takes care of that. The man said, the woman you put here, Lord gave it to me, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? Now here is the total blame game, okay? The woman said, the serpent deceived me. And I ate it. It's time that we look in the mirror and say, I'm where I'm at because I have chosen to be right. Amen. My decisions that I have made, be them good or bad, is the reason why I'm where I'm at. It's time that we quit blaming our wives. It's time we quit blaming our, blaming our mamas. It's time that we quit blaming everybody around us and say, I am who I am because I've got myself here. Amen. And the good thing about it is you can turn around at any time. Amen. Amen. You can turn around and change it at any time. The Lord said to the God, let me see. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals, and you will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your lives. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. To the woman, he said, I will increase I will greatly increase your pain, childbearing, your pains in childbearing, and I'm at 16 right now. With pain, you will give birth to children. Women, can you say amen? That's true? Amen. Your desire for your husband, your, your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. Women don't like that, but you know what? That's the plan of God. Amen? amen? Number 17. To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you. You must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you through painful toil, and you will eat from it all the days of your life. Man, I hate to tell you this. You have to work hard to eat. 